Welcome back everybody, this is Eric and Chad here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Today we've got a, another gun gripe episode for you, and today we are going to be poking a little fun at Feinstein's assault weapons uh, ban of 2017. Oh, shocker, there's another one. So, you know, we're, we're not like horribly worried about it, like gaining legs and going anywhere. And the thing is, we don't want to, you know, create a chicken little complex and say the sky's falling and all this kind of mess. We don't want to scare people or anything like that. Guys, all we're asking is for you guys to do what you've always done. Contact your reps and obviously, you know, uh, express your extreme displeasure for this garbage piece of legislation. And before we kind of get into the nuts and bolts of this whole thing, the one thing that I really do want to mention here, and you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to be an evil guy or anything like that, but how old is Diane Feinstein? I don't she's know. in her 80s, right? I don't know. I, I don't know. She's, I mean, I mean, she's older than the Crypt Keeper. I mean, so. come on, look. You know, I can appreciate anybody that's been in public service for a long amount of time or somebody that's, been retire. A, a, <laughs> somebody that's been an elected official for a long time. I get it. But, you know, come on, lady. I mean, d d does she really know what's good for the average modern American? Like, I mean, she is so old. Can she? Po what could she possibly know about how I want to live my life as a young guy? <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I but know Eric, it's for the good of society. Dude, and she's look, doing something. Look, I, I, she's I know, doing something. I know that with age comes wisdom and everything like that. And, and you know, but also <laughs> once you kind of get over that threshold a little bit, your mind kind of starts to go a little bit in the opposite direction too. Now, I mean, there kind of becomes a time when somebody needs to kind of step away from politics. You know, I'm not trying to be a bad guy. I'm not trying to be, a, you know, an a-hole or anything. But come on, man. We're just stating what, the what, what can that woman really know about what's good for me or like the well, average uh, person? I mean. My thing is, what can she know is good for gun owners? She doesn't care about gun owners. But yeah. she just cares about doing something. She's yeah. doing something in the wake of all this stuff. I, I just don't get it. It does not make sense to me. <sighs> you, would, you would think that. I, I just don't see how that mentality can resonate re resonate with Resi a, resonate? resonate. I can't talk today. <laughs> I, I can't see how that mentality can resonate with a voter. Are you over the how, how can how can somebody even think that voting somebody like that in is okay? Like what what does that tell you about the constituency that she has? Oh God. Well anyway, let's get into the nuts and bolts of this thing. I, I just wanted to kind of poke a little fun there because I, I just I think that this is as much a problem as of who this person is as the bill is itself. You know, after a while, you know, it would seem to all these people in Congress and all these folks at, com at these committees, <laughs> these hearing committees go, you know, they're like Willy Wonka going, really? You know, again? So we're, we're having this talk again? <laughs> So this makes what like the thirtieth time that you've come to the come Look, to the table she, with this? Like, come on! So she has the assault weapons ban sitting. It's like a big old stack of paper, you know. She pulls it out when when the time is right. Just and changes goes, the year. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> blows all the dust of it off. Is like, all right, twenty seventeen. It's like, let's make a few revisions. Here okay. You go. <laughs> so let's let's discuss it, shall we? All right. So anybody who's been in the guns for a while probably knows about the assault weapons ban you know that was uh, put back in place in 1994 under the Clinton regime so it banned uh, Is that what we're calling it the regime the regime yes the regime so uh, it was put into place and it banned basically semi-automatic firearms that could take a detachable magazine that had two features so after the bill was passed um, gun companies started making basically not really featureless rifles like you have nowadays like in Massachusetts and like California under their you know crazy draconian gun laws but you know you had guns that came out with pinned telescoping stocks or non-telescoping stocks that were pinned or full fixed stocks they had flash hiders removed and they had muzzle brakes put in place or they just had a non-threaded barrel or they would do like on a lot of some of the guns that they would do is they would machine the ports into the barrel, kind of like that Robinson there. Uh, pretty a much, good yeah. Example there. Like, um, grab it, show. Them. Where is it? I've got the yeah, roll. So this, this this gun, as far as I know, was built, you know, in the band days. Sort of, kind of. And you can see how it has 
the facsimile of a muzzle device, but it's basically just machined mm -hmm. into the barrel stock. But so, it's a break. But it is a break. And it's non-removable and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what he's referring to. But uh, anyways, 10 round mags, that sort of thing. You know, that's where you see all those old mags that said restricted for law enforcement and government use only and all that kind of crap. You know, so that's probably an old yeah. Colt mag or something. It is. You know, whatever. But anyways, back then it was two features. Well, with Feinstein's new bill, you only get one feature. So... <laughs> the new oh, bill. Oh, a compromise. Oh, we should oh. just support it. It's like, well, we know what we did wrong back in 94, so we're not going to go through that again. So, all right, so the new bill uh, bans the uh, semi-automatic firearms with the ability to accept detachable mags and one of the following, a pistol grip, a forward grip, a folding, telescoping, or detachable stock, a grenade or a rocket launcher, <laughs> <laughs> and those chainsaws and the corgis and all that kind of stuff too. Ah, so a barrel shroud. <sighs> What's a barrel shroud? A thing that goes up. The shoulder uh, thing that goes up. Shoulder thing. Yeah, Senator McCarthy uh, so aptly put it back in the day. Um, and then a threaded barrel. So a barrel. A barrel. So if you have a semi-automatic firearm with the capacity to accept a detachable magazine and has a threaded muzzle. Then it is a it is an assault weapon. Basically, if you have a semi-automatic <laughs> rifle, rifle, it's an assault. It's pretty weapon. much going to have one of those features. I mean, let's not be coy here. They know exactly what they're doing. <laughs> they want to make it look like, oh, this is not as bad. It's a compromise. Well, 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 guess what? Okay. Guess what happens when you compromise with the devil? He's still going to win. The, so, the devil never makes a deal that's not in his favor. No. And this this supporting this bill is like making a deal with the devil you, you know you're gonna give up your soul you're gonna do it. he's gonna get your soul so she is speaking all right so I, I i literally i stole this from adam kraut's video on the gun collective okay so josh sugarman he's the uh the head honcho at the violence policy center i believe but a while back he said that th this is kind of in relation to what the public's opinion is of machine guns and assault weapons and semi-automatic firearms and modern sporting rifles and all this and and how they kind of goo it all together and they don't know what's what Which all those terms are bogus anyway yeah. guns again. so he says the weapons menacing looks coupled with the public's confusion over fully automatic machine guns versus semi-automatic assault weapons anything that looks like a machine gun is assumed to be a machine gun can only increase the chance of public support for restriction on these weapons. <laughs> so basically, the stupidity of the American voter person, you know, will, <laughs> lead, to, will lead to this stuff being passed because they don't know better. <laughs> he basically just like screwed the pooch right there. <laughs> like he just he just gave away the whole shebang right there like just you, in that statement. Oh well these people are well, these so people dumb. These people are so dumb they'll just vote for it because they think it's a machine gun. Oh it's scary. So see, look, <gasps> look guys, I know I know we're being a little silly in this video, but God. that is why we focus so much on educating people because an educated populace can't be fooled by people like Josh. You know, that mm -hmm. that's just complete bullcrap to lie to your people and to just go, oh, well, because you're so dumb, we're just going to do this and they'll go along with it in the interest of public safety. Well, that's Guys, how we got health we, we, we have to, exactly, we, we have to always err on the side of knowledge. Mm. You know, knowledge is power, and that's mm. what our channel was about, is arming people with knowledge. Like... We try to spread as much information as we can to try to help educate people. Mostly about good these information. Things. I would say mostly good information. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> well, uh, you know, if it's a video you make now, I don't know about all that. Well, but, yeah. But the I thing is, though, lot. spreading information that, that helps gun owners is very, very important. Because of guys like that, mm -hmm. think about how many people just like him are out there and they're drafting up and dreaming and scheming of all these <laughs> anti-gun <laughs> legislation. You know, <laughs> Diane Feinstein's like a witch. She's on a cauldron going, <laughs> my little pretties, we're gonna take your guns. <laughs> I love I mean, you know, I'm telling you, they're 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 <laughs> conniving and they're scheming and they're dreaming up ways to take them. <laughs> and it's, you need to uh, you need to go over to the gun collective and watch Adam's video because there's a funny little uh there's a funny little segment in there with Diane Feinstein beating a drum. It's from some video game where but this guy beating a drum and her little face moving. It says, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. If I had 51 votes in the Senate, I would have done it. Boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah? Beating the war drum. Yeah. Really? It's quite 51 humorous. votes, huh? Well, that was that was a while back after one of the one of the well, shoes and all. But I know she's not going to do it. No. She's but not going to personally do it unless she's got a really, really strong, like, power chair battery. Oh, God. I mean, she would have to, I mean, <laughs> it would have to, she's going to have to go 
a long way. And she better leave now because I don't know how much time she's got left. I mean, if, if she's going to collect all those guns, it's going to take her a minute. Now, I don't know about the people that work for her. And if she's got a few errand guys that might be able to go collect all those guns, I'm not really sure how all that works. But I would really like to be a fly on the wall when she goes, all right, well, remember that Mrs. Mrs. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. America we talked about? We're going to have you go and, uh, and, and take them. They're going to look at each other and be like, <clears throat> oh, I got, uh, I got gone as if I hurt I'm going to have to stay home today. Come on. You are Come on. so mean. Come on. All right, so the bill also bans pistols that can accept a detachable magazine over 10 rounds. Which and has much all of them. <laughs> and has one of the following. A threaded barrel. Wait a minute. Hang on. Hang on. One second. One second. One second. What kind of video is this? This is... This is a silly video. It is silly. Well, this is serious, guys. Okay, we're... So, so you mean to tell me that this 18-shot CZ SP-01 tactical with a threaded barrel is an assault weapon? Here you go. Now it's not. Oh, well, look, here we go! <laughs> it's a single shot. All right, so a threaded barrel, a second pistol grip, a barrel shroud, capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some location outside of the pistol grip, so that's like your Tech Nines, your um, uh, like the Sykes Spectres, and and you know guns that are patterned after that. That sort Max of style. Max with like uh, the old school shrouds. Yeah. And basically just barrel extension. The, is B, all it is. the BNTs, uh, MP5s. Yeah. I mean, all that kind of stuff. Fake suppressors. You know? Like if it, it, a lot of times they just call it a barrel shroud, but if it's a suppress, it, basically it's made to have the cosmetic look of having a suppressor on the gun, mm. but it's just basically a solid shroud that it's just cosmetic, cosmetically looks like a suppressor, so, but it's not. more or less, this bill is something to ban every semi-automatic firearm out there, more or less. Pretty much. Um, she also has language in there to ban bump fire stocks, binary triggers. Uh, there's 200 plus firearms banned by name. Um, but fret not, all ye FUDs in FUDland. Bolt actions are not banned. So what, did King Arthur walk in here just now or something? 2,200 guns exempt for hunting, household defense, or recreational use. Fret not, peasant! <laughs> Ye shall have your bolt guns! For hunting and other recreational purposes. Well, alright. I mean, good grief, man. Who comes up with this crap? Alright, so going down the list, bans large capacity ammunition feeding devices. And Adam gave us a good definition of that, too. A can thank, of ammo? Thank, thank you, Adam. You're so awesome. A magazine belt drum feed strip, feed strip, or, feed sim strip? or similar device, including any such device joined or coupled with another in any manner, <laughs> that has an overall capacity of, or that can be readily restored, changed, or converted to accept more than ten rounds of ammunition. So, so back in the day, all right, when, ah! I, when I lost some of my teeth and my grandmother left me some. Some uh, some coins under the pillow. You know what she did? She took a big old piece of duct tape and she duct tape a whole bunch of quarters <laughs> together in a big old roll. And I had to unroll the duct tape to get the quarters. So if I take ammo and I put it on duct tape and roll it up, that now that's Large high capacity, capacity now. Ammunition feeding now, now that, that's high capacity now. You can't you can't be going with more than a couple of rounds now. You ain't no kind of man if you need more than one two, one two rounds now. So you know, I mean, duct taping your two AK mags together to make a twenty round mag out of two. I mean, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I don't guys. Know. It's rather ambiguous. So um, it it grandfather's in currently owned assault weapons and large capacity ammunition feeding devices. Grandfather's. So, yeah, it grandfathers them in. So if you own them now, oh, you're okay if this thing goes through. You guys are good. You can keep what you got until we tell you that we want them. Oh, well, that's so nice of them. You know, down the line. I mean, oh, well, you remember all, remember that bill we passed about three years ago? Yeah, well, we're making some changes to it, and y'all are just going to have to turn all that stuff in because <laughs> we decided that we don't want you to keep it. And, oh, yeah, and, uh, yeah. You so, can't loan someone a firearm. So un no. under, under this proposed legislation... Uh, you would also be required to go to a, a gun store and perform a basically a, a, a 4473. If he wanted to borrow my gun to go hunt with it, I'd have to take. We'd have to go to the gun store, <laughs> transfer the gun to him. He goes and does the hunt, and then all right, well, all right, I'm done with your gun. And then we'd have to go back, and he'd have to do another 4473 back to me. Yeah, because you know the government wants to know where those guns are at all times. Right, and and right. because oh, it's not your property or anything. See, where a lot of this stuff really confuses me and and downright just makes me mad look guys once yeah thank you bye <sighs> once once <laughs> we'll be seeing you see ya
Uh, you know, once a gun leaves a gun store, it is your property to do with whatever you wish. God, so I have a major issue with someone trying to tell me what I can and can't do with my own property. You got that right. If I want to go, hey, uh, Chad, you're a cool guy. I'm going to give you this gun because I like you. Here you go. Oh, I can, man. I can oh, do that. Oh, man. It, I oh. can do that. Now, you know, I, I wouldn't just obviously give a gun to some random you who I didn't know. I mean, you've got to exercise a little bit of common dang sense there, guys. You know, you can't give it to some jerk on the corner who's throwing pot to people, or, you know, or something. You can't sell it to a drug dealer or some weirdo. You can't I mean, do a that, straw purchase. And you can't buy a gun I mean, for somebody you know can't have a gun anyway. And the thing is, they, they want to create this air of uncertainty in people's minds, and they want to make it sound like this whole straw sale and all this bullcrap, that, that that's a regularly occurring thing, and it's not. The thing is, a guy that goes to buy a gun, if I go and I buy this rifle, guess what? I'm buying this rifle. Now, you know, if I buy this rifle with, with an intention of giving it as a gift for somebody, I'm dang sure not going to be going, well, yeah, that shady guy that I met the other day that said he would give me three times whatever I paid for it on the receipt if I just went and did it and put it on the form. Gun owners don't do that. They don't go and just buy guns for random weirdo people. They buy them for themselves. You know, if I buy a gun for my wife, well, guess what? All right. If I sleep in, in the bed with my wife every single night, and I don't know if she's a weirdo or, or wrong or messed up or, or bad, and, and I don't know if I can't give her a gun, I probably don't need to be married to her, right? What, what was the episode? Come on, man. Come on. What was the episode of the Mighty Boosh where uh, it was like uh, he found the dude on the street, you know, who gave him the receipt? For his keep that own, for your tax. Keep that for your tax. Oh, that's a beautiful. They cape. don't know. They don't know what that <laughs> no. is. Like giving giving his cape to the stranger on the street. It's like oh, well, what a lovely cape. Oh, I was gonna rape you and throw you in the bin, but now <laughs> but I ain't it. Ain't it? <laughs> it's like he it's didn't know like, that guy from Adam. It's, it's not like that guy. You're not gonna go around and just randomly give guns yes, to people. Yes, yes, we watch the Mighty Boosh. We're a bunch of weirdos. Yes, we are. So the thing oh is, guys, gosh. I mean, I think it's obvious to tell. I mean, I know that the tone of this video, we're being lighthearted. We're being well, probably is, a little bit goofier than we it's, normally would it's, be. I mean, this is satire at this point. I mean, because this yeah. stuff is ridiculous. It is. Now, I mean, but the thing is, it might be ridiculous right now. I mean, we do have a Republican-controlled Senate and House right now. But, you know, midterm elections are coming up. There's yeah. a pre presidential election in... Mm, you know, not it very might, long. It might as well be around the corner. It might as well be this coming year, yeah. more or less, but midterms are coming up and the tides can change. Now, if there's a democratically controlled House and Senate and, and a Democratic in, or a Democrat in the president or a presidency, then, you know, when something like this pops up again, they'll have the votes that they need. So, Look, the worst scary thing, things. The worst thing that you can possibly ever do in life, and, and this is, <clears> I'd <throat> like to think this is maybe a bit of a life lesson and not even so much related to guns, but the worst thing you can do is rest on your laurels. Oh, gosh. You should yeah. never rest on your laurels. There's whether a lot of whether you're now. somewhere in life where you feel like you're comfortable and you may be like, man, I, if I could just live like this forever, I'd be awesome. That's, well, that's great. It's okay to have positive attitude, but never rest on your laurels. Mm -hmm. Always strive for better and better and better. And guys, this is no different. Just because we are now in a position where we have some relatively good gun laws and we have a relatively pro-gun overall government and we have the capability of getting some things done. It'd be don't nice rest if they actually on, would. Yeah, let's, it'd be nice if they actually would. But don't rest on that laurel. Don't, don't go to bed every night going, oh, well, they'll never try to do anything. Because the minute you do that is the minute that one day you wake up and guess what? This assault weapons ban's here and there you mm -hmm. go. You didn't do anything, so... Again, just like the beginning of the video, we're not saying, you know, get crazy and do anything. We're not, we're not saying chicken little complex, the, the sky is falling or anything like that. But, guys, call your reps. Keep doing what you've been doing. Yep. You know, have have a standpoint of, not. I don't want to say aggression, but but have a little bit of, you know, have, have a, a bit of a, what's the word I'm looking for? Be proactive. Mm -hmm. You know, in this, don't don't allow it to go by the wayside. And while you're on the phone and while you're emailing, you know, tell them about national reciprocity and tell them about you know bringing share back. Tell, yeah, back tell to the them floor. to get share back on the table. Tell them to beat Paul Ryan's butt into gear and get that thing on the floor for a vote because that's what we want as gun owners and to right. do your job, like right. you said you're going to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Just keep it you up. You know we're talking about you. <laughs> I mean, you know who we're talking about. The, the bottom line is, you know, God, man. It, it's just, the thing is, <clears throat> and, and I know I've said this in one, one way, shape, or form before, but I'm going to say it again. Keep it up. Guys, leadership is not easy, okay? 
Leadership is a burden. Mm -hmm. It is. It's not easy, okay? When you elect somebody as an elected official, you are essentially <laughs> electing them as a leader. Like, you know, this country is a giant kickball team, and they're the captain. <laughs> you, you, are, you are designating those people as your leaders, and you have to hold their feet to the fire. You have to hold them accountable. Guys, the burden of leadership is not a simple one. And sometimes you're forced to make decisions that, you know, you're gonna, you know you're going to make a whole bunch of these people mad, but you're going you're gonna to make all these people happy. And what do you do? You have to make the most sound decision to please the largest majority of people that are going to be affected by the decision. Or sometimes in a leadership position, you may be in a position where, uh, you know, in, like in the military, you may be in a position where the decision that you make could mean that some of your men will die. You know what I mean? You could be literally sending someone to their death, but knowing that the decision is necessary for the mission as a whole. And that's a very, very difficult thing to have in your mind. I mean, and I'm not, the, the point I'm making, the, what, the, the point I'm getting to with that is that it takes courage. And we need courageous people in office. We need people that are willing to do what the right thing is because it's the right thing and because it's a constitutionally sound thing to do and not because they're trying to play ball or they're trying to make a deal mm. or they're trying to appease Compromise. this person or appease that person. Look, leaders do not ask for permission. Leaders do what they need to do and they do it because it's the right thing to do and they do it because of the overall goal, the mission mm. at hand. Those are the types of leaders we need in this country. And some of these spineless people we have working I'm worried that they're going to fold at the most important time and we need them to be strong. We need them to be courageous. Leadership is a responsibility. It takes courage and it takes sacrifice. And sometimes it takes swallowing your pride and realizing that the decision is bigger than you. And I think that's the issue is a lot of these folks, they're like, oh, well, yeah, I may, I may be a Republican, but I may not necessarily be pro-gun or I may not be this or that. That's irrelevant. It's irrelevant whether you're pro-gun. Because it, it's more important than your needs. You know, my, my needs as a gun owner and to be able to protect myself outweigh your feelings. It is what it is. It is what it is. If you don't like it, move. Go somewhere else. Eh, sometimes easier said than done. But, right. You know. Right. But, I mean, who, or who are you going to argue with? I mean, that, that's the thing I've always you know, tried, to understand, you know, tried to understand with all this stuff is... <clears throat> You know well, why? Why are you can't argue with a guy like yeah. us? What What kills me? What are you me, gonna do? What kills me are the rhinos. You know, uh, Republicans in name only. Okay, they, they, they campaign on this whole you know high horse about oh yeah I'm pro gun I'm NRA this NRA that or I support the gun owners of America yakety yak and then they get in office and then they want to start you know co-sponsoring bills with Democrats. <laughs> which, you know, might look good on the outside, but they're truly anti-gun at the core. Wow. You know, stuff like that. And you're like, okay, well, what is going on here? I, I voted you in to protect my gun rights, not to try to take them away. You right. fool, what are you doing? Okay, well, I'm going to vote you out next time. You know, unless you change your tune. You know, That's the idea. It, it, the it's not even really a Republican versus Democrat thing. I mean, those lines are, are <clears> beginning <throat> to be so blurred that it really just does come down to the individual. And, you know, they're, and I'll give credit where it's due, I mean, there have been some Democrats that in the past have made some pretty bold decisions in terms of the way they swing their vote mm -hmm. because they knew that it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, Democrats have supported pro-gun legislation, guys. Mm -hmm. It's happened, okay? So it's not just, you know, when a pro-gun piece of legislation comes up, it's not that, all right, well, we can pretty much bank on all the Republicans to vote yay and all the Democrats to vote nay. Guys, it's never quite that simple. I mean, Democrats oftentimes do sponsor uh, pro-gun bills, okay? And I, I'm, I'm not against there you know, being some type of par, uh, pi -bartis, uh, Bi -part uh, bipartisan. <laughs> I can't freaking talk today. I, I'm all for some bipartisan support. Yep. But the issue is that they compromise on, on things that really just, you, you get nowhere. You're just squealing your tires. So, you know, just like this whole, you know, let's fix, fix the NICS thing, you know, fix the, the background check system. Well, you know, oh, well, we're doing this and we're making it where you can do this, but then at the same time, oh, well, we got to have this in return. Well, I mean, a really good example that you brought up earlier, you know, that if a thief steals $100, and was it Adam that mentioned it? If, uh, if a, if no, a, that was in the email from uh, Eric Pratt from Gun Okay, well, America. Eric Pratt said, if a thief steals a hundred bucks for you, 
from you and you ain't got a way to get home, but he loans you 20 bucks to get home, are you still not being robbed? <laughs> I mean, and, and that's a really, really good analogy for this. You can't <clears throat> give somebody a little bit of an inch and allow them to take a mile. Well, they still took a mile. What's, what's the inch worth? So anyway, I know that we kind of rambled a bit in this video. We always ramble. But, but the point is, I, I think it's really important to remember that, mm. you know, these folks are constantly gunning for your rights, no pun intended. Well, we've said it before, you know, about complacency. I mean, on, on our side, as far as gun owners, in, in a mostly gun-friendly um, administration, you know, right now, and, and all as it seems on the outside, um, but... You know, you can't be complacent. You, we got to be on the offensive, and we've been saying that since last year. You've got to be on the offensive with this stuff and make sure that we actually get ahead of the curve because otherwise we're going to fall behind yet again, and people are going to be coming out and scrambling and just going apey because, oh, my God, there's crap dump coming down the pipeline, and, and we didn't prepare for it. Oh, my gosh, you know, well, all right. Well, you know, as we speak right now, they're having that hearing right now about HP 38. They're, they're uh, talking HR about 38. It. Yeah, HR 38. HR 38. National sorry. Reciprocity. Uh, yeah, the thing. National Reciprocity. And I know that's something we've we've constantly been talking about this and trying to get you guys to support it. And you guys have. Mm -hmm. You know, we we got the Share Act moved forward. I mean, the Share Act grew some legs, got out of committee, and then of course, you know, what happened happened. And you know, right now we have a chance for National Carry Reciprocity. And guys, even with National Carry Reciprocity. There's, you know, some people that are against it, some people that are for it, some people that don't completely understand exactly what's entailed in it. And, uh, you know, some people thinking that it could create some form of federal government overreach. But look, it, it's far simpler than everybody's making it out to be. The, the best thing to do... Just make um, every state constitutional carry state. Exactly. Easy. You know, but it would basically make it... Okay, so like if you have a driver's license... You can drive in any state. Every state has to accept my driver's license. It's not like I'm going to go to, I don't know, uh, I don't know, I'm going to travel to Wyoming for something, and then I show up mm -hmm. in Wyoming and go, oh, well, your driver's license is no good here. Mm -hmm. Now, think about how dumb that sounds. That's stupid, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That sounds really, really dumb, right? That is very dumb. So just like driver's license being accepted all around the United States, <clears throat> a carry license should be the same thing. Yeah. If you've gone through the, 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 the time and effort to get a carry permit and they've run a background check, not to mention how many times have you run a NICS check to buy guns that you mm -hmm. own to me? Come on, they've had numerous chances. If you were some screw up or bad person, trust me, they would know it. If you have that dang permit in your pocket, you ought to be able to carry a damn gun anywhere you want. Pardon my French, but mm -hmm. you know it, it's frustrating, guys. The problem with it is, I mean, just is, all the various laws in, in each state and how to go around that. Because I mean, okay, so if I'm a Georgia and I travel to California and I carry my gun, well, technically it's an illegal gun in California. So, I mean, how do they, how do they go about that? I mean, how, you know, what, what do you do? Well, you know, all right. You have to abide by the state laws at this point, you know, unless there's some amendment that changes that or whatever. And I don't know. I mean, the, the, like Eric said, the, the hearing is going on like literally right now. It's, it's in like, it's, Almost, I think it's in its fourth hour right now if it's still going on. We were listening to a little bit of it earlier and it's just like mind numbing. It is. You know, but we'll, yeah, we'll see the results of that a little bit later on. Hopefully it'll get out of committee and, you know, go to the floor for a vote, you know, so. Guys, but, all I'm asking you to do is, <clears throat> is what you've always done. Well, you I, guys have been a big help in that. I mean, we've been, you know, not only us, but Tim and Gun Collective and several other channels, you know, we try to get the word out there for you guys and the information. And you guys take the helm and you call your reps. I mean, it's up to y'all. And I mean, the results are, are seen when these bills get put into committee and get out of committee because of, you know, you pressuring your reps to support or, um, you know, go against some of these, some of these anti-gun stuff or bills that are out there. So it's you guys. It is. Y'all are doing it. I mean, we're just two people. Yeah, I can call my rep, he can call his rep. But at the end of the day, it's, it's the audience. It's, it's the collective group of folks that we all reach and that we share these ideas mm -hmm. with that you guys ultimately are where the rubber meets the road. You guys are helping us get stuff done. And without you guys, we'd be nothing. Yep. I mean, both, both as a YouTube channel and as gun owners, without each other, we're nothing. So all I can do is, is keep on beating the horn and trying to share uh, good gun knowledge as best I can. That's really the way we kind of continue to just keep doing things. And guys, it is what it is. I know this video is kind of long and, and kind of all over the place. And they I always are. In a lot of ways, kind of <laughs> silly. And yeah, it's, it's okay to be a little silly. 
it's all right to have a sense of humor, but at the end of the day, it's very serious mm -hmm. and it needs to be taken seriously, guys. So um, I appreciate all of you, uh, all of our viewers. We have a lot more videos on the way, a lot of mm -hmm. random stuff we're going to be doing. And believe me, when this stuff comes out, when all this, when, when our rights are under attack, we always try to do the best we can to get this stuff out to you guys as mm -hmm. soon as we can. So yep. uh, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I hope, hopefully we covered that <laughs> assault weapons ban uh, to the best of the, our ability, although well, a little bit I, silly. But. Well, silliness for sure. I just, I can't help but just laugh every time I read those bills. But, you know, it's no laughing matter if, you know, the, the deck is stacked against you. And you know, there's a bunch of anti-gunners in in Congress and and in the president or uh, in in the White House, you know, and everything to sign that stuff into law, and then it, it happens, and then well, well, all right, oh, well, <laughs> there it well, is. We so, sat around, and then it happened. So it it's just you know, we can see a little bit of humor in in the silliness of it as gun owners, but you know, the general public looking at it from the outside, all they see is a machine gun. Okay, big scary rifle that needs to be banned. That's, That's all right. they see. So it's up to y'all also to educate those around you, you know, to the best of your abilities. I mean, a lot of people have anti-gun friends or folks that just don't shoot and don't know. A little bit of education helps, you know. You are an ambassador so, mm -hmm. to the Second Amendment. <clears throat> Every single person that owns a gun, guess what? You've become an ambassador to uh, protecting our rights. Whether you like <clears throat> it or not, that is your responsibility. You know, love it, love it or lose it. Yep, for sure. So, guys, thank you for watching today's video. We hope it was somewhat, somewhat to the point. And uh, we appreciate all of you guys. Y'all are wonderful. Thank you for watching. We'll catch you next time. Thank you, guys. See you next time.